in 2019, Google did the quantum uh, supremacy demonstration showing that you could scale up uh, a quantum processor from tens and twenties of, of qubits to over 50 and have it still function and, and do computations that are beyond what a classical supercomputer can do. And there were two metrics that we looked at in that, in that demonstration. One was the time to solution advantage, and that was the one that was published. But we also looked at the energy advantage of how much energy was required to run the, the Sycamore computation in 300 seconds versus energy required for using the Summit supercomputer. Um, but the problem was, you know, it's, it's many years were projected to be required. And so, in fact, we, we published the time to solution advantage. It was very concrete. It was a, it was a well-accepted metric kind of horse race. But the energy advantage was 2,000 times higher. So five kilowatts versus 13 megawatts is an example uh, for a figure of merit. And so you can see that the time to solution was, was, was awesome to see. It's, it's a race. Classical algorithms improve. Classical um, hardware improves. And so we've seen the last four years leapfrogging where there's a demonstration of a quantum computation that is beyond what a classical supercomputer can do. And then there's improvements in the algorithms, improvements in the classical resources so that now it's no longer claim deep advantage. But then more results are, are, are shown uh, on the quantum computers. And so it's a, it's a healthy, nice competition. But the, the energy advantage, I think, has never really fallen away. And that's one that will be durable for some tasks. On the right, you can see a, an estimate of the scaling uh, of, of the energy consumption. Um, and there's there's talk of this quantum energy advantage, which is the energy consumption of the quantum algorithm. So classical computing scales exponentially um, with that problem, problem size n, but you have a sub-exponential scaling for, for quantum computers. And so you can see a place where there's there's still, there's error correction, meaning you have reliable computations, but you've actually shown that you can use a lot less energy to run the same computation. So this is this is great news. It's important to keep in, in, in mind and, and it's a call to action of let's accelerate our plans to leverage the quantum resources, to integrate them into a hybrid computational uh, environment so you can take advantage of this. Now, quantum computers are not faster at every calculation, and so it's going to be a subset. There may be algorithms solving a real problem today where 90% run on a classical supercomputer and 10% on, on a quantum computer. But you're going to have a time to solution advantage, you're going to have an energy advantage as well, and so you're going to help reduce the energy demands for, for these larger computations. And you see in the news, if you've been kind of paying attention the last few months, just talk about how artificial intelligence is not scaling. There's two main problems there. Number one, data. So these latest models from ChatGPT and Grok and others are trained on the vast majority of the digital data in the world of text, right? And now they're training on the images and they're looking for more data to train on. They're, you know, sometimes digitizing old records and newspapers that were not digitized. Voice, I, I, I saw that some companies are looking at, at videos like YouTube videos and, and, and making the text and, and kind of um, doing the copywriting of that data to convert it into text to train the models. And now, in fact, we've heard that the large language model uh, companies that use them are now creating artificial data with the models to then train the models on. So it's a very recursive and there's questions about the quality of that of that training. But you're seeing the data is being limited in terms of what can be trained on and the energy. So uh, some of the headlines, AI pushing the world towards an energy crisis, explosive demand, America's running out of power. And just in the last month, we've seen that Google, uh, Microsoft and others have signed deals to purchase nuclear power in the future to allow for the manufacture of new nuclear plants. And sometimes in some cases like Three Mile Island, the, the restart of, of older nuclear plants. And I think going back five years, we would never have predicted that this would happen, that you'd be having this, this urgent call to action for nuclear power and any kind of power, solar, wind, hydro, to power um, the growth of AI. And it's really a, a key blocker for the scaling of AI. We're, we have not yet reached artificial intelligence level. Um, uh, Sam Altman has said in a paper recently that he thinks we'll reach that in, in 12 to 18 months. And that's exciting to see, but we need to see how we're gonna solve this kind of energy limitation. Another reason to integrate uh, quantum computers into the existing classical infrastructure 
is that if you're looking at artificial intelligence, quantum offers some exciting opportunities. There's hypotheses that um, that that the best way to simulate the quantum, the, the human brain and memory is through quantum computation and memory because of the way that the brain operates today. It's a neural net. And this was seen um, by Jeffrey Hinton and others um, that the human brain with neurons and synapses and the way that they fire is operating a neural net. And so that was the impetus, the the, the idea to create modern machine learning and that has scaled rapidly and allowed us to do you know, image and text recognition as well as many other uh, applications of AI. And so the human brain is composed of neural nets and so running a neural net with a quantum computer has the opportunity to be much more natural. So today we have to use you know, billions of sources of, of text to train these models that require a large amount of energy and generate a lot of waste heat. Um, to train these models when a quantum computer has the opportunity to do that much faster and much more naturally uh, and could give us a chance to have actually realistic AI in a machine. Also, uh, uh, scientists and biologists are, are studying the way the brain functions and there's some hypotheses that, that the way that the, the information is exchanged and stored, there is function at the quantum layers of our cell. So this is exciting to explore. And so it's another call to action of why you'd want to have a quantum computer available to use for AI. And, and in, in addition to the energy and the natural AI is really the computational power of, of, of quantum computers. So it's been shown theoretically that for, for some well-known algorithms, a quantum computer is going to be quadratically or exponentially faster than a classical computer. And so for those three reasons, uh, it's a great uh, call to action, you're seeing this opportunity to integrate QPUs into data centers and to high performance compute. And I'm confident that we'll see that in the next five years. Um, it's just around the corner.